Nice and quiet that Garrett. Doesn't go clank. Good morning. Here we've got Welsh Pony, which is uh, just been prepared and uh, ready to go out off shed, pull some more trains today. Uh, but uh, next week, Welsh Pony is going to be out of traffic because um, the it's been in service for about a year now, and the uh, annual boiler exam is has come due. Um, so next week. Welsh Pony will be in the works. We'll do the usual stuff you need for an annual boiler exam, which will be take, draining the water out of the boiler, taking the, uh, the washout plugs out and the fusible plugs out, so that the boiler inspector can have a reasonable look in, see it all is well. Um, then we'll put it put it back together and the steam the loco and the boiler inspector will be back again to see the loco in steam make sure the safety valves are blowing off at the right pressure that sort of thing so um, we normally try and do this sort of work on locos in the winter but uh, obviously with Welsh Pony coming into traffic in the middle of early of last year then uh, it's, it's fallen due and so we, we, we have to do it we have to do it again. Right, um, this is uh, as far as the Garrets usually go on the Festinog Railway because of the uh, load and structure gauge limitations, obviously. Um, 130 is here, obviously, to coal up this morning as it's on the, uh, the service that only goes to Beth Gellert. Um, so we, we have to coal the garret here at Boston Lodge which um, in normal times we don't do uh, they normally get cold at Denis but um, we've been uh, well we've, we've had to make special arrangements get some uh, coal here at Boston Lodge and um, use the, the machine to coal uh, as hand and coaling a garret is uh, just not not practical in a in a sensible time. So. But this arrangement that you can see going on is uh, working quite well. As, uh, just how long we'll be running uh, the service only to Beth Gellert from here, well, I'm not quite sure, but uh, we shall see. Okay, so 1.30, it's been uh, running reliably now. We had a few uh, teething troubles with um, the coupling rod and connecting rod bushes. Uh, we were experimenting with Vesconite, a plastic bearing material, um, which uh, we've got working okay on the coupling rod bushes, um, or the smaller coupling rod bushes anyway, but the, we were continually having issues with it getting too hot on the connecting rods and the big coupling rod bushes. So on those we reverted to traditional bronze and white metal bearings at the moment. Um, but say so we need to do a bit more, a bit more work on the on the Vesconite material. But anyway, having uh, solved the bush problems, 130 is now uh, 
in traffic and reliable generally and uh, yeah we're very very pleased with it these are the tender wheel sets for the ng15 number 134 uh, they've been here for a quick check and uh, reprofile on the wheel lathe here at boston lodge um, the the bearings for them uh, are having some attention in the works at the moment and when when they're done, the whole lot will be coming back, going back to Dinas, uh, because uh, they're hoping to get the bogies together for the tender quite soon, and then get the, the tender chassis on the bogies. So these will, be, these will be disappearing in a week or so, hopefully. Right, this is the boiler from the Linda, um, which is obviously out the loco for a 10-year boiler exam which means we have to strip all the lagging and cladding off so that the all the surfaces are revealed we will be taking out all the small tubes here um, hopefully the two big flues can stay in place as they've only they were renewed at the last 10 year overhaul and they considered that uh well normally hopefully they could stay in place for maybe 20 years if if they are in good condition um all this stripping work uh will then mean that the surfaces can get cleaned and then the boiler inspector will come in and have a a really good look um, another part of the process which we've started doing and you can you can see that here in various spots over the boiler is doing thickness testing um, we use an ultrasonic test meter um, and the little spots of grease you can see allow the meter to see into the plate and see how thick it is uh, so by doing that we can see how much wastage has gone on on the boiler in the last 10 years uh, and then the figures marked up that 11.9 there means that it's this piece of plate just here at that spot is 11.9 millimeters thick so obviously we know what the what the plates were um, the different plates when the boiler was built um, so we can see where the deterioration has gone on um, once once these small tubes are out we'll be particularly having a look down here because this this area at the normally in the smoke box is one where soot collects um, and you get some wastage of the, this tube plate in that area there so that's an area we'll be looking at and the boiler inspector will be interested in um, it may be that if we find there's significant wastage on the on the plate here we might be able to do some uh, building up with weld just in a localized area or if it was very bad we'd be looking at uh, a new tube plate obviously that would be a very big job um, i don't think the wastage will be that extensive it doesn't doesn't appear too bad we won't know properly say until the tubes are out and we can get the thickness tester down in that area um, so the process is just sort of starting of, of cleaning and looking at it this boiler is nominally uh, one of our oldest boilers now it was built in 1936 so that's quite old however um, back in 1996 we uh, well a lot of work was done to it at Pridham's um, down in Devon they fitted a new inner firebox and they renewed a lot of the 
outer firebox lower areas um, and this there's a piece of plate let in here in the bo bottom of the barrel where wastages have, had occurred in the in the barrel plate in this area and inside just next to the tube plate as well so um, say so although it's nominally an, quite an old boiler uh, a lot of it a lot of the bits that are prone to det deterioration were replaced in 96 so fingers crossed it shouldn't be too bad with I'm sure there'll be some repairs that we'll need to do but uh, hopefully not too much and then obviously it's a matter of retubing a hydraulic test and then reassembling it back into the loco um, and uh, you know, putting everything together and then a, a final steam test before the loco can go back into traffic so it's some while yet before Linda's going to be back with us but um, the process is is well on the uh, the tubes are expanded into place uh, in the firebox end that's what you can see there as well as being expanded they're then welded into place um, with a, a seal weld now obviously to get the tubes out that means grinding off the the weld and the bit of bit of tube that is, is sticking out into the firebox so that's what Rob here is doing is uh, grinding that weld away flush with the tube plate which will start the process of releasing the tube but then that's, that's just there. the first bit go on I don't know whether you can get that you can actually see the line between the tube and the tube plate just there that's how you know you've gone far enough but but then there'll be there'll be lots of um, hammering to knock the tube out that way. Uh, Actually, it, if it, you look be... at the other end, I've warmed some of them up. You can see where they've contracted. You warm yeah. up, let them cool down. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, an arduous, dirty task. The tube, old tube removal, because obviously there's soot. Um, however, it's got to be done, and um, it's it's. He's going to do a bit, yes, right. Just before, if you look in there, you can see there's a, there's a weld around the tube nest. And that was a, a repair, that piece of plate was replaced 10 years ago after some cracking from on the tube ends in, in the tube plate. So that piece of plate there is actually only, only 10 years old. So again, we're hoping that that plate is not going to be uh, in bad condition and basically we'll be able to just retube. Here's the James Spooner. Um, as you can see, we've started to put some of the cladding sheets on. Uh, actually, I should rewind a little bit and say the boiler's had a successful uh, hydraulic test from the, the boiler inspector. So, so that means we can now move on to fitting the cladding sheets, which are these sheets here. Um, supporting these sheets off the boiler, there's some uh, more steel strips called crinolines, which uh, they space the these sheets away. Uh, and in in here, eventually, will go the the lagging sheets, the insulation, and that's uh, we use a rock wall material. Um, but first of all, all these sheets have got to be cut and nicely fitted, which is a bit of a time-consuming task, but. Uh, that's progressing quite well. Um, so these uh, nice shiny looking cut pieces of stainless steel have come from our profile supplier. They're, um, they'll form the, uh, the blast pipe bases and tops, these, these bits. 
and the other bits will form the the spark arrestor baffles in the smoke box smoke boxes these are the superheater elements um, ready to all formed up with these nice uh, return bends by the outside supplier um, the other ends have ball ends that fit up inside the superheater headers those we will finish in situ because um, that final bit of fabrication it's best to be done on the actual boiler so we get a perfect fit rather than relying on everything coming from outside um, and not necessarily being a perfect fit on onto the actual boiler so that bit we will do this is one of the uh, the ash pans which sits up under the firebox here and the ash can drop down um, and the uh, these two side openings are where the ash can be raked out using a rake reaching in to about well most of the way across pulling pulling the ash out this again is in stainless steel um, it'll last longer hopefully um, because obviously it's quite a, a corrosive and uh, can be hot environment so um, ash pans have a, a finite life uh, 10 20 years maybe um, just just depending on how much the loco is used right here's a smoke box um, for one end of the loco again it's in stainless steel because we've found that um, the ordinary mild steel ones are just not lasting a, a reasonable length of time whereas in stainless steel um, these smoke boxes should have a very long life indeed um, and although the material costs more in the first place actually in the grand scheme of things it's much better to use a stainless because of the the life will be many times what a, a mild steel one would be these are some of our standard carriage roller bearing wheel sets um, these will have been in service for a long time i don't know how long exactly maybe uh, 20 30 years um, but over time the the wheels wear and have to be reprofiled perhaps every three or five years so eventually the wheel diameter wears down to a point where there's not enough material left to safely continue using them so what we what we're doing with these because these have worn quite considerably um, the the remaining tread and flange has been machined right off and we'll fit uh, tires to these um, which will effectively renew the wheel for another 30 or 40 years hopefully um, the steel tires come from a, an outside supplier and then we'll machine the the bore of the tire to match exactly this diameter but with a very small interference fit so the tire will then be warmed up with a gas ring dropped onto the wheel and as the tire cools it'll shrink and grip grip the wheel and that's purely what holds the tire on um, but as long as the interference is correct that's a very tight grip on the wheel center I say will run for, for many years this is the this is the rear engine unit from Garrett number 138 um, it's been here having a pretty major mechanical overhaul um, the wheel sets are over there they've been reprofiled the extra box has been checked the horns have been checked for alignment and everything and that that's all good so um, but the major work that we've we've had to do to this is uh, we've renewed this cylinder casting um, the reason we've done that is 
back in the 1990s in Africa, uh, this cylinder suffered a lot of damage um, where the piston hit the front cover and it tore out a bit of the casting and damaged the liner. Uh, it was repaired out in Africa and it, it's run successfully um, since then for many years, many thousands of miles. But um, more recently there's been a small leak from the bottom of the cylinder uh, in an area that was weld repaired out in Africa. And we've been a bit concerned about that on and off. Uh, for a while. Anyway, we've uh, we've decided that we should make a pattern in order that we could cast new cylinders for these, as we've obviously got quite a lot of them in service, and we rely heavily on the on the Garrett locos. Um, so a few years ago, we we made a pattern, and we had a, an iron casting done, and we've had that in stock for a while. So, with this mechanical overhaul, we've taken the opportunity to replace this cylinder. So, this is a complete new casting. It's uh, been machined here at Boston Lodge. Um, it's uh, the, the separate liner that the original design had, we've cast integral with the cylinder itself um, because we don't think. There shouldn't be any need to uh, change the change this. This can be rebored as necessary over the next, I don't know, 30, 50 years, something like that. Um, and we will have, you know, we can always replace the castings again in future, should it need be. Um, the valve liners here at the top, they are separate, they're machined separately from uh, hollow bar cast iron um, and then they're shrunk fit, fitted into the cylinder casting. Um, they're shrunk by using uh, liquid nitrogen and then dropped into place. So there's a lot of work gone on here um, but you know, obviously we're now hoping, having done this, that this is, this is going to be good for many, many years into the future. Um, and luckily the, we've made the, the pattern is not handed, so if we need to re, uh, we, we can do left or right hand cylinders, uh, which obviously makes the process a lot easier than having a separate pattern for each side of the, of the loco. Here we've got uh, the main piston from this engine unit. Um, you can see the outside has been, uh, it's all shiny, that's been remachined to suit the new, uh, the new cylinder, which has obviously been uh, bored to the, uh, the minimum, the starting size. Um, so we've remachined the piston to suit that. Uh, we'll have new rings will be fitted in these grooves. And similarly, these are the piston valve heads and the spindle. Again, these have been remachined down to suit the new valve bore. This, um, this engine unit is having a, a heavy overhaul now, and then we'll do the, the second unit that nominally belongs to 138. Um, but what we're, what we're planning to do is um, so we're planning to put 143 back in traffic sooner than 138. So what we will most likely do is put the two overhauled units under 143 where they'll work. Um, and hopefully that'll be in traffic. 143 will be tr in traffic again next year. Um, in the meantime, the engine units that are nominally belong to 143 they will get a, a lighter overhaul because they're they've done less miles than um since the last than these 138 units um and then those will go under uh 138 when we get that back into traffic which will probably be 
perhaps in another year's time, something like that. You see the wheel sets for 138s or 143s engine unit. Uh, these have all been reprofiled. That's one of the jobs, one of the most important jobs at uh, a mechanical overhaul because the the treads where the profile goes out of shape uh, over time. Um, so all these have been in our wheel lathe and uh, they're back to the new standard profile. Um, so these should be, they should be able to run happily for another uh, five years, I would, I would think, uh, depending on just how much mileage the loco does. Here's the Taliesin. Um, like the Linda, the 10-year uh, boiler exam has now come due. And so, um, again, starting the process of stripping it all down to reveal the boiler. Um, you can see the fittings have come, been taken off in the cab and the cab top's now off. Um, uh, obviously the tanks will need to come off and then we'll be able to lift the boiler out of the frames uh, and it'll go through the same process as we're, we're doing with the Linda, which is uh, all stripped down and carefully examined. Um, so it's uh, quite a long process. Um, there's a volunteer gang particularly assisting with, with the Taliesin. Uh, they've been doing a lot of the, the stripping work.